Hi, I am Elisa Tanvir from Skillcurve. In this video, you will learn how to load a disconnected dataset into a Redshift warehouse and for that, we will first create a stack using CloudFormation. Then we will give the Redshift cluster permissions on Athena and Glue. Then we are going to create a Spectrum bucket, load the data into the simple and Spectrum bucket and finally, we are going to copy the data from the simple bucket into the Redshift warehouse. So, we'll start by creating our stack using the cloud formation. But before moving toward that, I've made a few changes to my create cluster.json file and parents.json file. So, if you scroll down a little bit, you will see that in the S3 bucket policy here, instead of only allowing the permission for the S3 bucket, I have also provided permission for Athena and the Glue. So, Athena is a technology overlying the Redshift spectrum that we are going to use and glue is the data catalog that manages the metadata about the Redshift. Moreover, if you find for the S3 bucket, you will see that instead of a single bucket, now we are creating two buckets. One is the Redshift bucket and the other one is the spectrum bucket which is going to contain our spectrum data. And similar changes are also reflected in our parents.json file. Here you can see in the end that instead of a single bucket, we are creating two buckets. One is the simple redshift bucket having the name my test source data, and the other one is the spectrum bucket having the name my test source data spectrum, which is going to contain our spectrum data. Okay. Now let's move towards our command prompt to create our stack or the cluster using the cloud formation. For that, we I am going to use this query. And once the query is successfully executed, you will have a cluster 2 S3 bucket in the AWS console. Okay, let's move towards the AWS console. Here you can see that I have a stack named first Redshift created. Then I have a cluster which is named the Redshift cluster. Okay, it is still creating. And then if I go towards the S3 bucket, here you can see I am in the S3 bucket. I have two different buckets here. First is the my test data source, which is a simple bucket and the other one is my spectrum bucket. Now I'm going to first move towards my simple Redshift bucket into which I'm going to upload the data set. So we are going to click on the upload button and from your system, you have to select the files namebasics.esv.gz titlebasics.tsv.gz and titles.tsv.gz file okay these three files are going to go into our simple bucket let's click the upload button and it is going to take some time because the data sets are very large let's go back and then in our spectrum bucket click it there is a different way of uploading the data into our spectrum bucket so the spectrum works in a way that it expects the data from all the tables to be retrieved in a directory. So that means that a bucket can hold data from multiple tables and a table can be made up of lots and lots of files. So of course we need a way to organize them. So the spectrum does that by creating a folder. So we'll also start by creating a new folder into our spectrum bucket. So here inside our S3 bucket, we are going to create a folder, we are going to call it properties and then simply we are going to create this folder and once the folder is created, then inside this folder, we are going to upload a file that we downloaded earlier, which was title principles.tsv.gz file. Okay, so it is also going to take some time for uploading. So when it uploads, then I'll come back. So while our data sets are being uploaded, We'll see whether our cluster has been successfully created or not. And if it is created, then we are going to copy the cluster endpoint and the ARN to do the further processing. So let's run the describe stack command to see the status of our stack. Okay, so you can see that our cluster has been, our stack has been created having the following value. And if you go down, you will get the cluster endpoint 2 which is a value that we need to connect to our data grip okay so in the output you will have a lot of data these are the two things that we need so firstly we'll copy our cluster endpoint starting from here and before the colon sign because we don't want the port 
then go to your data grip and since we are working with a new cluster so we have to create the connection again right click on the project and then go to the properties and change the host name with which you want to connect your data grip so this is the host that i want to change and paste the cluster endpoint here the port is going to be the same everything else is same now let's test the connection and you can see that connection is successful okay so right now since we have created a new cluster so it does not have data inside the tables or it does not have any schema like we have in the previous video so we are going to create the schema and the tables inside the schema so in our console we are go i'm going to paste these commands to create the table firstly i'm going to create a schema called imdb just for like we did in the previous videos so once the schema is created then we are going to move forward and we'll create the tables so we'll execute these queries one by one firstly we'll create the title table in the imdb then we are going to create a table for title basics and then we are going to create a third table called name basics inside our imdb schema executed and you will have three tables inside your imdb schema if you expand it you can see that we have three different tables name basics title and title basics here let's clear all this a bit and since we have just created the tables and we don't have any data in it so we are going to once again run the copy command to copy the data from our s3 buckets into our tables inside the data grid and in order to do so we can write these queries here firstly we are copying the data into the imdb.namebasics table we have provided the path of our s3 bucket where the data set is present the only thing missing is the arn for our im role and once you go to your command prompt you can see this is the output value for the redshift cluster im role copy this and you have to paste it here here and for the third value here okay so once this is done i am going to execute these three statements one by one to copy the data into the respective tables and once all the data has been copied you will see that these three tables will contain the data if you double click it data grip is going to run a simple select query for you and it's going to display all the data that is present inside this table so this is the name basics table then we have the title table having the following data and then we have the title basics table okay so this is how you can upload the disconnected data into your redshift cluster and then connect it using the data grip in the next video we will work with the glue which is the data catalog that is all for this video thank you